I'd like to introduce David Paltiel. Uh, David is the Chief Product Officer at FAB. For those of you that don't know, FAB is the world's design store that enables everyone to express themselves with unique, modern, and affordable products that brighten their lives. In February 2013, FAB was named the number five most innovative company in the world. FAB won the award for best e-commerce company of the, of the year by TechCrunch, both in 2011 and 2012. Um, so I would like to welcome David to the stage. Say my name, say my name. If no one is around you, say baby I love you. If you ain't running game. Say my name, say my name. You at the Hi. I'm David Paltiel. I'm the Chief Product Officer for FAB. Founded in 2011, FAB is a global online retail store for everyday design products. I'm the Chief Product Officer, but when I say product, I don't mean the cool merchandise that we sell. What I mean is I'm responsible for designing, building, and optimizing the web and mobile experiences and then all of the technology behind them. I'm mostly going to talk about FAB's journey. Um, highlighting three major transitions in the business. And I have a lot of colorful slides to share, but for a few minutes I'm going to stay on this slide and talk a little bit about my own journey and what I do at FAB. Years before FAB, I started my career as a management consultant at a firm called Katzenbach Partners, which is now part of Booz & Company. I left Katzenbach in 2009 to become an early hire at diapers.com. At the time, diapers was about 30 employees in Montclair, New Jersey. I knew nothing about parenthood, but I was excited about being part of the next wave of e-commerce, the world after Amazon's meteoric rise. And so I commuted 90 minutes each way, and we knew that online retail was perfect for commodity products, like diapers that you have to buy every week and you don't really care who ships them to you. And we knew that if we smartly designed our supply chain, we could do it cheaper, faster, and better than anyone else. Diapers soon changed its name to Quidsy, and we went on to launch companies like Soap.com, Wag.com, and Yoyo.com, and then a slew of other consumer retail shopping experiences. My role throughout all of this was to figure out how to use technology to ship incredibly fast and with incredible efficiency. In 2011, Quidsy sold to Amazon, and I started looking for my next big challenge. That June, I heard about Fab, and I signed up for the daily emails. I got hooked. I was fascinated by the colorful, cool products in the newsletter, and I was also perplexed. I didn't understand how it was possible for people to buy rugs and lamps and dishes online without ever having seen them. I felt like I had cracked the code on shipping commodity products, but I had no idea how you could build a scalable, sustainable online business for housewares and furniture. But I had a gut feeling that this was going to be the next wave of e-commerce. That summer, I joined FAB. Late one night, when I was working on some mundane analysis for some technical integration, I decided that I was going to write to FAB CEO and convince him to hire me. So at midnight, I started writing. At 3 a.m., I pressed send. And at 6 a.m., I was invited to breakfast with the founders. That was my beginning at FAB. At the time, FAB was just a small tech startup in one small room without air conditioning. But I was captivated by the founders' passion and the opportunity to learn something new. There are two lessons for me here. One, never be afraid to send a bold but well-crafted email, especially if you're writing to an entrepreneur. And two, don't make your people work past midnight because they might leave you. <laughs> I think that's more than enough about me, so let's talk about Fab. This slide encapsulates the FAB journey over the last few years. FAB was founded in 2011, but it came out of a very different kind of company called Fabulous, a gay social network. Fabulous was founded by two friends, Bradford Shellhammer and Jason Goldberg, who had an idea to combine the best of Facebook, Foursquare, and Yelp for an exclusively gay audience. What they quickly realized was there wasn't that much space in the gay social networking area and that gay people were already on Facebook, Foursquare, and Yelp, and Fabulous couldn't compete with that. So it was time for a reality check. With a million dollars left in the bank, Jason and Bradford were ready to scrap Fabulous and start on something new. So they went to dinner, 
and over at least one bottle of wine, but probably two, they came up with a new idea. They knew that whatever they would do next, it needed to meet three criteria. It needed to be something they were passionate about, it needed to be something they could be the best in the world at, and it needed to be something that there was a market for. It was then that they realized design met all three criteria. Bradford had a lifelong passion for design products, and Jason had a passion for sleekly designed online user experiences. And so Fabulous pivoted into Fab. From the very beginning, it was all about design. The word design means a lot of things to people. To some people, it means expensive and elitist. At Fab, we have always wanted to demystify and democratize design and make it accessible and affordable for everyone. We believe that everyone, everywhere, benefits from great design. For us, everyday design is modern, it's fresh, it's colorful, it's vibrant. It can be quirky and have a sense of humor. It can be inspiring. It can help a person express themselves. It's also consistently high quality. An everyday design object has a story behind it. It's a story, more often than not, about the designer who made it, about that designer's cleverness or perseverance. There's a level of craftsmanship there. Good design means being well made. And of course, the everyday part of everyday design means bringing the right value for the price. Our heart has always been in everyday design. And in the beginning, our vehicle for bringing everyday design to the masses was flash sales. Every day, we launched new flash sale events. The events were short term, usually three days, and all the products were sell first, meaning we took the orders, and then we placed purchase orders from the designers. We had exponential growth. We went from four sales to, per day to 16 sales per day, and suddenly we were operating in both US and in Europe. And flash sales brought us some huge successes. Oh, this isn't formatted too well. <laughs> By 2012, we had over 10 million people sign up for our daily emails. We sold over 6 million products in every imaginable category, and we had partnered with over 20,000 design partners who ranged from small craftsmen operating out of a basement to iconic design brands with over a century of experience. Of all our successes operating a flash sale business, two things stand out as the achievements I'm most proud of. We helped people discover products they might not have found otherwise, and we helped brighten their lives with easy access to everyday design. And two, we helped small business owners grow dramatically fast by giving them a global platform to showcase their products and show the world about what they do. To this day, whenever I wear a t-shirt that shows I work at Fab, somebody comes up to me to talk about the sale they had on Fab and how it impacted their business. And that always feels really good. But the flash sale model was just the beginning of our journey. The second story of transition I want to talk about happened last year. Flash sales had some inherent challenges. In today's e-commerce world, the expectation is that orders will arrive fast. We've come to expect shipment confirmation emails within minutes of clicking on the buy button. But flash sales, when you don't own the inventory before you sell it, makes fast delivery almost impossible. You have to wait for the orders to come in. And then you contact the designer to start preparing the orders. And if the volume far exceeded their expectations, it takes plenty of extra time for them to make and then ship the products. While customers love daily discovery, they do not like waiting. And that's what kicked off the great debate of 2012. On the one hand, flash sales had been a huge driver of our growth. They promoted daily discovery. Every day, we launched a dozen new shops. And it was easy to experiment, because there wasn't risk in getting stuck with inventory. We could find the weirdest, coolest stuff, put it on the site, and see how it would sell before we committed to buying anything. But the customer experience could be stronger if we invested in inventory. We knew that we could have faster delivery if everything was sitting in our warehouse, ready to ship, when the customer bought it. But we also knew that if we managed the fulfillment, we could also control the experience of receiving and opening a fab box. We could make sure all the items in an order ship together, reducing our fulfillment and outbound shipping costs, because there wouldn't be multiple shipments for a single order. And finally, we knew that we could gain healthier margins from our suppliers by buying product up front, 
and we could alleviate their concerns by giving them some certainty on how much we would want to buy. And so we decided to slowly test the waters by shifting 10% of our business to an inventory model. And it paid off. The customers who received their orders out of inventory had a much higher net promoter score, meaning they talked positively to their friends about Fab and recommended it. And they were much more likely to become repeat shoppers. By the end of 2012, 70% of our orders were shipping out of inventory. We had reduced our click to ship times from about two weeks to on three days average. And today, we're now almost 100% inventory based. And that brings me to the third transition in our business. We talked about the pivot from fabulous to fab and the transition from flash shelves to an inventory model. The third transition is one that's happening right now, and it's our push to profitability. The next phase for fab is a focus on three tenets. Everyday design, smiles guaranteed, profitably. Everyday design has always been at the core of our DNA. It's been a constant for us throughout our existence. We're continuing to focus on curation and ensure that all the products we sell are high quality, well designed, that they brighten people's lives and that they have a story to tell. Smiles guarantee means that we promise our customers will love everything they buy. If they don't like something, anything about the fab experience, we will do everything to make it right. We offer free returns, no questions asked, and if customers find a better price elsewhere, we refund them the difference and we lower our price. We believe that the key to online retail is top-notch products backed up by best-in-class service. And our last focus is on doing all this profitably. When a startup launches, it's like a rocket ship. The growth can be phenomenal. But the next phase in the evolution of every business is to get onto a path of profitability. We are ingraining a strategic and systematic cost consciousness into the way that we operate, and that's gonna be our key to getting onto the path of profitability. I'm excited about the next phase of Fab's growth, and I'm ready for what's next. Thank you very much for your time.